me just share this stuff out real quick. One more share. All right, I think we're good. <clears throat> so what I want to do uh, now that I'm back in Austin, uh, I remember now why you shouldn't really do those red eye flights because they're tiring. But the good news is I got uh, actually made an earlier connection. And so I'm back in town two hours earlier and that's gonna allow me the time, a little bit of extra time to get a few things done, a few administrative things done for the for the little lady but uh <clears throat> then the plan would be to jump straight back into what is behind me here or behind the camera we're going to finish setting up the uh, jaws of victory and get started on that later this afternoon so that'll be exciting and i thought what i'd do now uh, since i just got back from game on in seattle i uh, left uh, midnight last night had a good time had a great time uh, a couple of little minor dramas here and there, but we, we managed to, to get through them and we'll get to those things. Uh, I have eight games I want to comment on and I thought rather than doing, I may do individual videos, but this is just kind of stream of consciousness and I <clears throat> might be a little tired, so it may not make a whole lot of sense. So I hope you'll bear with me, but uh, I'll we'll give you a rundown on the games we played. And then uh, in the uh, details below, when I when this reformats and puts itself up on the web permanently, I'll uh, put time markers in for the specific game. So if you want to have a listen, uh, at the, some of the specific stuff, we can do that. Okay. So long preamble. Sorry about that. So play Decision to Casserine, the old three W game made in the late seventies, early eighties, I think. The new Gene Waterloo game from Mark uh, Herman. Uh, I had two sessions of uh, last hundred yards. One was a play test of a new para, the para, new paratrooper module. And then I had two sessions of World of War 85. One was a four player, eight map, multiple battalion game. And one and the other was uh, each side with a couple of companies so uh, banging away at each other, uh, showing a friend how to play. Had some light gaming. We did Adventurer, uh, which was kind of cute. Uh, I played some Panzer on a custom map with a custom scenario, which was uh, excellent. And it shows us a, a lot of things about the Panzer system that could be done differently. I uh, played Westphalia uh, last night, a five player game. And uh, that, that's where the, a little bit of the drama occurred, but we'll, we'll get to that. And we'll talk about that game. And then the two other games I want to talk about that I sat in on and watched uh, quite a bit of was Elusive Victory and Totala Creek. Uh, and I think it'd be worth making some brief comments about those two games as well, based on my my detailed watching of them while I sipped on a, an old fashioned <coughs> and watched very seasoned players play. Okay, so decision at Kasserine. Now this is probably gonna tick a lot of people off because uh, yeah, that's, it seems to be a, a very interesting game with lots of potential that wasn't completely thought through and uh let's set aside all the nostalgia and set aside our love for the nostalgia of old games just because they're old games we would still want to hope that all those old games we played and that we loved back in those days are actually good games today when we sit down and think about hey that that battle and what we know about it now and what versus what they know we make adjustments for all that and then we then we make a judgment and I found myself, uh, we played, we set aside most of the day to play because it looked like it was a fairly robust game. Uh, and we was over in three and a half turns. So the Germans just stomped all over the allies in a bad way, you know, to, the, to the extent that there weren't enough units on the board to really make it worthwhile continuing to play. Now, I'll lay some of that blame squarely at the feet of my opponent who uh, did not understand the best uses of artillery or reserves, but also, uh, and you know, you're trying to help, right? But you don't want to play the game for them. So you got to let them do their thing. Look oh, at that pink pen. Uh, so that was, that was really disappointing. Now, of course, small counters, small fonts, 
uh, not particularly great, uh, great you know, colors on the on the counters, difficult setup instructions. I like the little setup chart, I guess that helped, but it wasn't very clear with what you had to know the formations, you know, so it'll say, you know, the 27th something, right? So unless it had an Italian name, I didn't know whether that was a German unit or an Italian unit. So I had to go rummage around both sets of, of counters to find specific units. So pretty frustrating. I read the rules on the plane on the way in, nice and clean. It seemed to all make sense. But when we get down in the weeds, there were a few challenges with uh, how reserve movement would actually work for both sides, how final protective fire would work for both sides, because that's allocated at an unusual point in the turn cycle. And I think that is where uh, we, you know, first term we obviously did that wrong when we sat down and had a, a relook at the rules. We're like, you know what, this is how this works. And what this ends up doing is telegraphing the defensive intent uh, and focal areas of the defender against the attacker. And the attacker can then choose to go use their assets elsewhere, which means that you then don't get final protective fire for those other units. You may get some other artillery units that can be used or whatever, but you don't get final protective fire, which can suck. Uh, so <clears throat> Germans were never attacked, but maybe once uh, and that all went horribly wrong. I think the CRT is really cool. I think the move, how, how movement and combat all works is really cool. But it just, it was one of those games that I felt like, hey, if we had to spend another month or two or three months or four months and really finish this off and polished it up, it could be an awesome game. So I'm hoping at Compass, because I think Compass is going to redo this game. I hope they take the time to play the old game again and stop and think about it and, and think about it not from your your nostalgic viewpoint, but play the game as the rules are written and see where the little hiccups are, because it could be an awesome game. Great terrain, really interesting situation, as you all know, with the Battle of the Casserine, so we don't need to go into that. So that was that. So that left me hanging for, uh, you know, I had a nearly a full day of uh, downtime. Part of that, uh, I'm going to come back to, uh, and part of that I filled with uh, last 100 yards. And I got to meet Mike Denson, the designer, super nice guy. And I encourage you that if you have a chance to engage with him, uh, I think you'll find you'll enjoy your time with him. He's a knowledgeable chap and very personable, and he has a, a unique take on things. And that, and is also very enthusiastic and very passionate about his system. So let's actually let's deal with so let's deal with last hundred yards now. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's the game, I think, at the moment in the marketplace that is your other tactical system of choice at the squad level. And if you play ASL or Lock and Load or Band of Brothers or uh, Combat Commander, this could be your other, hey, I'm going to go play a different tactical war game at the squad level. This could be your game if you're looking for something that is different and brings a different, uh, a unique view of uh, squad level combat. It's not a game you're going to get the first time. Uh, and that's not because the rules are hard, it's because the choices you need to make are hard. Uh, am I going to you know, execute a form of opportunity fire? Am I going to execute an assault? And if I am going to do an assault, how am I going to do that? And where am I going to get the, the means to put some cohesion hits or suppressions on the enemies so that they'll have a better chance of winning uh, that, that assault? If I don't win that assault, where am I going to retreat to and recover and then come back out and try again? Uh, so there's some, some fascinating to me uh, thinking around what tactics am I going to use to solve this particular problem at this particular time on the board that a lot of other games don't bring you? Uh, you know, you kind of get into that rhythm of here's an easy way to do something. So like with lock and load, for instance, <clears throat> you can, you know, there's a, there's the mega hack, mega stack tactic. Uh, there's the pushing units up and adjacent to spot tactic and things of that nature, right? You, there are, there are ways you can use the game system to get a, a, garner a benefit over your 
uh, opposition. Same thing works for OST and, uh, and in different ways with ASL and, uh, and other systems like that. They all have their, their quirks, right? You know, dumping cards in Combat Commander, uh, different things you can do. So, or counting cards uh, as well. Uh, but the interesting thing to me was that because I've got this time clock uh, ticking in the corner and I've got these other things going on, um, and I think, uh, yeah, hi, Mark. Good to see you, and thank you for the comment. Um, I think that there's a lot of interest for this game, but I think it's it's just struggling with awareness. And so these systems that uh, that uh, Mike has put together are really interesting and deserve a little more attention and a little more effort from us to kind of appreciate them. I played once or twice here, and I was like, yeah, I'll get back to that game. I like it, but I don't get it yet. Uh, now I understand a little, a little bit better uh, to having a, a, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to get the designer to slow down and, well, don't, don't play the game for me. Don't solve all the little problems or, or the mathematical bits for me. I want to understand how did I get to a minus one or a plus one? So you gotta, you gotta, sometimes you gotta pull the leash on the, on the designer and say, Hey, calm down. <clears throat> don't get so excited. Show me how this all works. So. We did that. That was so. That was pretty cool. And I, and I think uh, also playing the new module with, you know, I didn't realize I had nearly thirty six maps done now or more. And there's a need for more scenarios for that for that system. So if you are a scenario designer and you want to do a battle of bulge uh, uh, set of uh, scenarios or an east front pack, because they're working on an east front pack. Uh, module. If you want to, if you want to build scenarios, I reach out to Mike Denson and uh, have a chat with him because they can turn that stuff around. I think pretty quickly and get them published uh, for you know much quicker than they get a new module out, for instance. So anyway, the power drop stuff was great. Uh, we got our asses absolutely handed to us. So that was a that was a little bit of a shellacking there. Uh, but this scenario was uh, pretty well pretty well balanced. It was a, a capture two bridge things with the, the, the paratroopers dropping in. Very cool. So highly recommend the last hundred yards game. It's gone up quite a bit in my estimations in terms of the uh, the, the quality of the gameplay and the diversity or richness of the gameplay. I'm, I'm really enjoying it quite a bit. So got to still got to dig into uh, the mechanics of the armor and stuff like that uh, there's some very specific te techniques and tactics i think that you're going to have to be cognizant of and i had a conversation with uh, mike about that and you can look forward to seeing mike on a design a deep dive at some point in the near future so we'll he and i are going to organize that to get it together uh i played with a, a shady guy uh, any of you guys who know Dick from Seattle, he's a he's a he's a shark. Uh, so I played Waterloo with him, Mark Herman's game, and after the uh, hang on, just one sec. I'm actually uh, running something online here right now. So can you come back in a few minutes, please? Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. You're a good man. Where do you want to go eat? Uh, let's go get some Chinese food. I'm hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> Mark Herman's Waterloo game. As we started unpacking this, uh, you know, we set the sort of the second, I think the first scenario up, which is a shorter scenario. Set that up, got into it. Lots of, uh, you know, uh, it's a cycle of movement and activity until someone is in a zone of control, basically. You keep playing and keep moving and keep maneuvering. Uh, until someone's in a zone of control. And then of course, it was when you run out of units to, to move, one of the people is gonna have to say they pass, or they may choose to pass as well. So it has this uh, very dynamic feel to it. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Don't get into combat. Combat is bloody and deadly. And we were destroying cores left, right, and center, not just, not just uh, uh, blowing them, but eliminating them once we got down to the nitty gritty part of the action. <coughs> so I would say that that game needs multiple plays to really appreciate it as well. It's got a, there are a couple little hiccups with the rules here and there that I think Dick and I had questions on that we probably want to go back and, and find out some specific answers about how, how grand batteries are used correctly. Uh, some, some of the re retreating, 
circumstances we hit were a little a little edge edgy you weren't sure how that worked but overall a very very clean game and a very fun game and a relatively fast playing and lots of room for maneuver and it's a really i think i think the intent is for it to be a game of maneuver uh wondering what could have happened if uh wellington hadn't uh been successful at quattro bar if uh if napoleon had gone in a different direction if luca had it turned up earlier or later or moved in a different way there's lots of that going on and you certainly you certainly will get a chance to explore that those options a lot with this game and it's a very 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 simple format highly abstracted but i think it's a a fascinating little system that will probably get multiple plays here at the house and with with friends at some point it's, it's pretty cool so i got uh, again got a big thumbs up on that uh, i talked about the last hundred yards world war 85 uh so the i think i, I mentioned when i started the video we did one uh one eight mapper and, and a single map game single map game was a learning a learning game played pretty fast and pretty furious very deadly as you would expect my opinion of the world war 85 uh, packaging content scenarios rule book all the rest of it hasn't changed at all um, i'm massively impressed and i think the guys have done a great job with uh refining the headquarter rules updating and uh putting a little more granular detail into the ammo usage and loss uh utilization rules they they, they work really well it's, it's a different system than the old system, which was clunky at best. And what was the other bit? Uh, uh, the cards for formations uh, is genius. I would have preferred to have had jits, but so be it. Uh, what was the other aspect of the system that changed that I liked? I like the way that the firing and moving fire has been reorganized and adjusted. It makes it makes a lot more sense now. It does kind of up power uh, the T seventy two a little bit. It also gives a mobility benefit to leopards and M ones, which is good. Uh, assault combat's all pretty much the same. None of that really changed very much. So, the, what what are the hickeys on the game that uh, are problematic for me as we as we dig into it? There are there are probably more typos than there need to be in some of the scenarios and even on some of the uh, formation cards. So instead of say, saying 121st, it'll say 120. Uh, it'll, it'll use a TH instead of an ST or RD instead of an ST uh, for various formations. And that's just, uh, that's just a lack of uh, second sets of eyes proofing things. There are some you know, little gaps here and there with some of the scenarios where perhaps all the, all the bits and pieces are either A, not clearly defined, or B, uh, need to be better defined, and, and you know, who sets up where and starts where, and, and that needs to, be, needs to be worked on. So super excited about uh, the system still. Uh, it, I think there's a bunch of errata being published shortly and a new rule book being pushed out. Uh, for people to consume and i think whatever counters are missing if there are any missing i've heard that there's in one scenario there's not enough um, uh, toes or something like that so okay so uh there's a world of war stuff was great i played adventure as well i don't think we need to say too much about that it's a it's a bar fight thing with lasers and uh that was just a good beer drinking uh pet pretzel eating uh, uh slug fest that was a lot of fun and then um Hearing a lot of barking. Oh, somebody is here. Well, hopefully my son will deal with. Uh, let's see. Panzer. Now, Panzer. Uh, we we had uh, two two guys relatively new to the system, and uh, the gentleman that was hosting Kirk uh, did a great job of explaining how everything worked. Unfortunately, that tagged out uh, turns to you know forty five minutes plus for. Uh, four players to, to get something done. And I was fortunate enough to have one of my friend's sons playing with me and he rolled all the dice. And I don't think he rolled over 10 or 11 to hit in, uh, <laughs> in, in like 20 shots. It was unbelievable. 
So we had lots of fun with Panther, and it just reminds me that I got to get that game and MBT back on the table because they are fantastic systems. Uh, once it, it down at that low level with uh, squads and individual tanks, another great game that uh, if you're into the tech head stuff for tanks, that's the game to play, and particularly for the modern stuff, right? With all the air and audio and all that sort of good business. So I think that was super, super good. Really enjoyed it. Uh, the map, uh, so the custom art uh, work that was kind of grafted over, put on a, a winter map. Uh, so we froze the river and uh, had this uh, winter feel, a white map. Uh, I'll post some pictures online later on. Really good, looked great and uh, gave it a great feel and really took that horrible, horrible color palette for the maps in Panzer and MBT. Got rid of all that and it, it changed the game completely. And we also had tiny little minis as well, so that helped too. Uh, excuse me, got a stomach rumble there. I'm going to deal with um, Elusive Victory in Totala Creek. I watched Elusive Victory, uh, so I highly recommend Panzer, obviously. Uh, uh, Elusive Victory. I'll be selling my copy of that. That's not a, a, a game for someone to play solo. And I think if you're not really into or excited about uh, air warfare and planning and ops and all that sort of fun stuff, then it's not a game for you. I'm particularly interested in package development and, and planning your routes and doing the SAM strikes and stuff like that. I think that would be super cool. But I am not sure that that game is really is soloable given all of the hidden information. So I will be letting that bad boy go and Red Storm as well. Uh, and it's also incredibly slow. Uh, there were uh, 10 or 15 turns before anyone got to within striking range of SAMs or dogfights and then really not a whole lot happened. So uh, I don't have time in my life for that. So that, that stuff's gone. And, uh, uh, you know, it's it's not a lot of fun. Uh, from what I saw. <clears throat> Totala Creek, on the other hand, four guys, or was it three guys, were playing the, the European campaign from the uh, the earliest date that you can play. Had a lot of fun with that. Enjoy, enjoyed sitting in and watching them play and, and do their diplomacy and play their cards out and, and see what, some of the what-ifs that can happen. And they had an excellent time with that. And it reminds me that I need to uh, I've only played the 39, 1939 scenario on that thing. We need to get uh, get that guy back on the table and do the full, the full, uh, the full whammy on that. Last topic, two more things. Second last topic: Westphalia, five player game. Have to have five players. It's an odd little dark of a game. And I'm trying to recall all the stuff because it was the last thing I did uh, played, and I had to uh, rush out. But uh, the <clears throat> Yeah, it's uh, set uh, in and around the Thirty Year War. So we've got uh, each each faction: Spanish, French, uh, the Dutch, the uh, uh, Swedes, and the uh, Bavarians. All have uh, different goals, but they're split into two basic camps. And so, if uh, like if I win, then some of the other guys are going to win potentially. And if the French win, then he's going to draw other people along with him, and he's going to be trying to help them win. And you can try and help them win, but you might still want to do deals because it's a free and open diplomacy uh, uh, construct. But what you're basically trading are your assets, uh, which is your. Uh, you start out with a heavy debt burden, and the debt burden costs you. Uh, you, you take on debt based on the amount of prestige you have and the, or the number of the amount of prestige is impacted, I should say, your prestige impacts your debt level, the growth of your debt level, <coughs> and it also impacts uh, your standing with, uh, with others and you use it as a tra your prestige as a tradable commodity and, and it will affect, you can use soldiers as a tradable commodity and that anything that you have as a tradable commodity, including debt. So as the Spanish, you start out with a whole bunch of debt and you're going to get that down to a certain level so that you manage it well and uh, and not lose all your prestige in, by doing so and not lose any territory. So you're encouraging your, oh, was it the Austrians? Maybe the Austrians was the other country. Uh, anyway, uh, so, uh, so I'm working with the Austrians and I'm working with uh, 
kind of sort of working with the Dutch who were playing both sides against the middle. And they're a, they're a, a little bit a little bit of a peace broker in that in that regard, and they can uh, they can siphon off debt and, th and things of that nature. So this game is is uh, very short. It takes an hour and a half or two hours to play. There's lots of to and fro and haggling, and you're trying to offload debt or take on other people's debts in exchange for soldiers with which you might need or uh, influence points on the board. There are you know there are discs that have to go on the board to control certain areas. And uh, based on who controls those at the end of the game, that's going to drive your specific victory conditions. I'm doing a really crap job explaining this game. But nevertheless, we had a lot of fun uh, haggling with each other and working out, hey, look, if, I, if you take five of my debt, I'll give you one of my prestige. Or uh, I need uh, one prestige and two soldiers. Here, I'll take seven of your debt or whatever the case may be. So a lot of fun with that game a very once again a very clean and very subtle hollenspiel game that really struck me as being uh, fun and fascinating probably not a game i'm going to run out and buy because i would have a hard time getting five players to sit around the table and play it but i think once you did play it you'd be wanting to play it at a con sort of later in the evening as a g as a go-to go-to game for later in the night uh, you know relaxing and have a have a soda pop or a beer and, and play that game lots of fun so last thing uh um while i was there i had an opportunity to talk to a new designer well it's not really a new designer but uh, someone who's been working on the polyonic systems for a long time and i'll be uh, sharing a, a new design deep dive in the next few days once i've edited the interview uh, for a system called on battles and it's a polyonic system where the first four games or three games are going to be uh, smaller either one or one and a half or two map games and it will have the elegance and flavor and feel and detail of uh, Lapatai, but it's going to be extremely uh, streamlined and refined. And there'll be some fixes to, uh, uh, there'll be a real command system uh, put in place in, in the advanced rules. There'll be a very advanced uh, artillery rules if you want to use them. There'll be more advanced uh, means and mechanisms of using skirmishes. There's uh, all the information will be on one on one side of the counter, so you won't have to be flipping the counters over the entire time. But you're still going to get the richness of the tactical detail out of this system. And I'm pretty excited to be able to get um, this particular system up, uh, uh, have a conversation with the designer about the system and about his design methodology, and uh, share that with you over the, over the next course of the next week or so. So it's going to be lots and lots of fun. So look forward to talking to all of you soon. That was my game on experience. Thanks, Jeff Newell and uh, the gang for having me up and uh, entertaining me and feeding feeding me and uh, being good guys. And thanks to all the folks I play games with. And I, I, we, we bought beers for each other here and there. Uh, really good con. If you can get get to it and get uh, and get a ticket because it's uh, it sells out quickly, I highly encourage you to, to try it out sometime up in uh, sunny Seattle. All right, all the best.